Hello everyone, welcome to the FIG online events, a series that includes open and free seminars and webinars with the participation of the FIG FIG Academy experts. We hope the entire FIG community enjoyed this opportunity with us. My name is Marco Bortoleto, I'm a member of the FIG Education Commission and I'm very happy to present the next topic. Improving performance with nutrition, sleep and rest presented by Professor Dr. Ignacio Grandi from his hometown in Madrid, Spain. Please, Ignacio, join us. Hello, Marco. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. Good, thank you for accepting our invitation. So, Ignacio, before I give the words to you, I would like to introduce a little bit you for our spectators. Mr. Ignacio Grandi is a PhD in sports science, teaching and researching at the Politecnico University of Madrid in Spain. He's also a very well-known FAG Academy expert. As a scientist, he's publishing several papers about science of gymnastics. It is important to mention Ignacio works at a, as a head coach in women's artistic gymnastics at Mahada Honda Club in Madrid. Ignacio, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Marco. It's a pleasure for me to, to have this new opportunity of uh, collaborate with the FIG educational program. Thank you very much. Oh. Wonderful. Please feel free to start your presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Marco. And welcome to, the, to all coaches from the different disciplines to this new seminar of the FIG educational program. In this case, we are going to talk about uh, improving performance with nutrition, sleep and rest. I would like to start uh, say thank you to the FIG Educational Commission, uh, especially to Marco and Anis, and also to Hardy Fink, one super expert, expert and the father of, of the FIG education. And also, I would like to send a message full of energy to all the coaches from the different disciplines because I think we are performing a very hard work during this pandemic and be sure that uh, we are going to win this battle. What we are going to, to talk about, we are going to talk about uh, performance. Uh, this is a really objective all, of all coaches and performance is related with different parts of training. Performance is related with physical preparation and technical preparation. All coaches know this relation, but there are other parts of training that are important for performance. They are the psychological, the tactical, the theoretical, and the biological preparation. All these are pieces of a big engine. Gymnast is like a big engine with different parts. The Two principal parts of this engine is the physical preparation and the psychological and the technical preparation. But there are other little pieces of this engine that, that must work to, together, this psychological preparation, the tactical, the theoretical, and the biological preparation. You could have a, a problem in these little pieces and the engine works, but uh, as coaches, we want to have the big opportunity to have the better performance as we can. So we must to work in these, all these areas to have the better opportunities of, of having the most level performance. And what is biological preparation? Biological preparation is all related with the recovery process. In this recovery process, we can include the nutrition, the diet, the sleep, the resting process, 
And the two main objectives of this biological preparation are to optimize the recovery process and also improve the condition for adaptations because, because adaptations occur during the resting process, not when we are training. Adaptations are developed during the resting time during the recovery process. So it's very important to have the best conditions for adaptations. All this is related with the compensation principle. All coaches know this uh, principle, how the fitness level change uh, when we are training, the fitness level goes down, and then we need a resting time, recovery process to have an increase of this fitness level of the gymnast to achieve a higher level to be prepared for the next training session. In this seminar, we are going to uh, have a look at the recovery process. How can we improve the rest of my gymnast to have better results, better adaptation, better super compensation after training? Um, how many times does my gymnast need to recover? This is a very interesting question. This is a recent research from 2017. Uh, this is a, a study with uh, USA Women's Artistic Gymnastic Gymnasts. They uh, have performed five different physical tests, uh, pull-ups, Leg, uh, lifts, vertical jumps, and then uh, they uh, repeat this test uh, 24 hours later, 48 and 72 hours later. You see that in some cases they don't uh, achieve the same level as the beginning after these 72 hours. So we have to, to think that there is an accumulation of fatigue day by day, week by week, and we must uh, try to have enough time to recover, to have the better condition for the next training session. It's not a good idea to have this uh, fatigue at the beginning of the training session. So it's very important to uh, have uh, a good idea what to do during this resting process, to have the better possibilities for the next training session. Two principal ideas at the beginning of this topic. The first one is rest is part of the training process. The training process is uh, a relation between the training load and the resting time. And you have to manage these two variables. You have to, uh, you need a balance between how many time you spend training and how many time you need to rest as best you can uh, balance these two variables, you have a better periodization and you will have better results. And also, you have to think about rest is not the same thing as doing nothing. You have a resting time, you have a lot of things to do to improve the level of this rest, to improve the level of the recovery process. Especially three aspects that you have to uh, think about nutrition, sleep, and rest. These three aspects are related with uh, what coaches know as <clears throat> invisible training. Because what you, what you do at the gym is the visible training, it's your physical preparation, it's your technical preparation, ballet, trampoline, etc. It's the visible preparation. But outside the gym, the gymnast, must be working for the performance. How? With the nutrition, with sleep, with rest. And this is the responsibility of the family and it's the responsibility of the gymnast. You can give them advices, but the gymnast must uh, develop these advices. First, we are going to start with nutrition. 
I need to, to say that uh, we are not going to uh, talk about all the different parts of nutrition because it's a very important topic. We are going to uh, talk about a specific nutrition for recovery, recovery nutrition. In this case, after training, uh, we need uh, three uh, aspects that are very important after training. After training, the gymnast need to refuel glycogen stores with carbohydrates. Gymnasts need to repair the muscle damage with proteins. A gymnast needs to rehydrate with fluids. It's just, these are the three main objectives after training. We began with refuel. Refuel is related with energy, and energy is related with carbohydrates. This is very important. When you think about energy, you must to think about carbohydrates. Don't think about proteins. Proteins have another function. Carbohydrates, it's related with energy. And energy is stored in our body in different forms. One form uh, important is the glycogen. You eat carbohydrates, but you store these carbohydrates in the muscle in the form of glycogen. If you have a big uh, store of glycogen, you have uh, better possibilities of have energy. Especially in gymnastics, glycogen is very important because we use it anaerobically, anaerobically, for uh, having enough energy. And uh, look, gymnastics is a uh, high intensity work. And when you are performing this type of work, glycogen, muscle glycogen is too important to get energy. So for gymnastics, it's a very, very important objective to have as much as possible muscle glycogen stores. For this objective, it's very important the moment of carbohydrates intake. And it is said in different research that uh, this moment must be immediately after training. You don't have to lose your time three hours, four hours uh, after the training, having your dinner with carbohydrates, this is a mistake. You have to take carbohydrates immediately after training. Why? Because this is a, a period of rapid synthesis of muscle glycogen with uh, no require or presence of insulin. And this, uh, this occurs especially after the training session. And also, in this moment, you can see the highest muscle glycogen synthesis rates immediately post-training. There is a relation of what happens during the exercise and the post-exercise response or answer. During exercise, there is a decrease of the muscle glycogen concentration, and after training, post exercise there is an increase an immediately increase of the rate of glucose transport and an increase of the capacity to convert this glucose into glycogen so we have to use this information for practical and an, another important aspect is which carbohydrates are better for this intake we need high quality carbohydrates. We need complex carbohydrates, not simple carbohydrates. This is very important information for gymnasts. Use complex carbohydrates like beans, like whole grains, like fruit, vegetables, pasta, because they have a higher concentration in fiber and nutrients, have a low glycemic index, so we need to intake good quality carbohydrates and immediately after training. And another interesting uh, idea is that uh, it's uh, very good to combine protein 
with carbohydrates in this immediately intake after training because the glycogen resynthesis process could be accelerated by this combination between carbohydrates and proteins. So having all this information, we can give advice to the coaches. After training, what is good for a gymnast? For example, uh, a half banana and a glass of low-fat milk. This is examples. Uh, of uh, berries, berries with low fat yogurt. This is very, very, very good combination with proteins, with carbohydrates, or a bowl of granola and a cup of low fat milk, or a whole wet toast with almond butter. These are recommendations. Or banana with low fat milk and cereals, or low fat fresh cheese, a kiwi and wet toast. These are uh, really recommendations for this moment, post-training nutrition. The second objective in this uh, post-training nutrition is to repair the muscle damage. For this, you need protein. Protein has this objective, to repair this muscle damage. And one very important idea, muscle damage is necessary to improve the performance of the gymnast. In every training session, we produce this muscle damage. The coach manage the level of this muscle damage because uh, he choose the intensity of this training. More intensity training, more muscle damage. Muscle damage is necessary, but an adequate level of muscle damage. Muscle damage is related with adaptation, with muscle adaptation. But um, be aware, don't produce too many muscle damage. Okay, you have to manage which is the adequate quantity intensity of your training session. This muscle damage could be, um, could be recovered with the protein intake. You need principal protein intake, but there are other uh, food that is related with this muscle recovery. It's vitamin D, cherry juice, creatine, omega-3. They are very interesting for this purpose, to muscle recovery. Protein is the basic for this muscle protein because reduce the markers of muscle damage and accelerate the recovery of muscle force. In this moment, we have to choose between plant and animal protein. There is a, a, a question very interesting, which is best, the animal protein, the plant protein. Um, normally, we, it has said that protein, uh, animal protein is a real protein. So we need animal protein. We have to know that we don't use protein. We use the amino acid that are the components of this protein. So it's possible to have all the amino acids with plant protein. The answer is yes. It's possible to have all these amino acids with plant proteins. And look at the advantage of the plant proteins. Plant proteins have low level of sugar. They are rich in carbohydrates and essential fatty acids. So as long as we have the adequate intake of amino acids, the source is relevant. So this is a, a very interesting question. And I recommend you this film in Netflix, The Game Changers. In this uh, film, different high-level um, athletes um, expose their experience with this intake of plant proteins. I recommend you. Also, for this purpose, for the muscle recovery, you need vitamin D. Vitamin D increases the satellite muscle cell activity and improves muscle function also reduce marks of inflammation. 
we have to know that vitamin D is related with sun bath. Uh, in some cases, uh, we can uh, see uh, gymnasts that have very low levels in vitamin D. Uh, I recommend to go out from the gym, have some bath because sunlight helps the resynthesis of vitamin D. And also, you can choose the right uh, food, like 45, 45 cereals, orange juice, mushrooms, ricotta cheese, fatty fish, cold liver oil. These are food that have a good quantity of this vitamin D. That is very, very, very important for this muscle recovery. And uh, cherry juice. It appears list as a drink that provides uh, many beneficial aspects for this muscle recovery. It's a very good idea to include this uh, drink regular after training session because it reduces the perception of soreness and reduces the markers of inflammation. So it's a good idea to have a, a cherry juice after training. And also creatine. Creatine have a lot of, a lot of uh, studies, a lot of research, analyzed uh, the uh, creatine supplementation with athletes. Uh, have a look that all these uh, studies are with adult, adult athletes. So um, I think it could be a possibility, but there are a lot of things to do before you use this creatine supplementation, okay? They have very good results in some cases for this muscle recovery, but previously you have to manage some other aspect of the nutrition of the gymnast. And also don't use it with children. There is no uh, good uh, answer with children. There are not enough research for, with children and uh, use other uh, strategies with children and nutrition. And also you need uh, omega-3. Omega-3 is very important to uh, produce this uh, muscle recovery because reduce the perception of soreness and lowers inflammation. And where is this uh, omega-3? Omega-3, you can find this uh, fatty acid in salmon, in different uh, kinds of uh, fish like mackerel, also in walnuts, and I have to say, in the Spanish, olive oil is a very good source of omega-3, cauliflower. Different kinds of seeds, like chia seeds, flax seeds, and berries. Berries is a very, very interesting fruit that must be included in this nutrition for high performance. And the final idea uh, related with nutrition is that nutrition is a, a very wide uh, topic that is necessary to have uh, help with nutrition because it's the basic to improve your performance. You need a plan, a specific plan, plan for nutrition with your gymnast. And also we have to uh, talk about radiotate after training. Because a proper hydration is uh, related with essential function of the body. Uh, it has a relation with the regulation of body temperature. It has to regulate the blood, blood pressure and also helps the transport of nutrients. So it's necessary to have a proper hydration. After training, uh, to have this uh, rehydrate with fluids uh, helps the gymnast to prevent this dehydration, lowers the body temperature and heart rate after training, lubricate joints, and helps to repair muscles. So, another interesting thing is that for our objectives, for our purpose, the most recommended drink for recovery for exercise is water. Don't lose uh, your time uh, looking for the best sport fluid. Uh, in our case, we is enough with uh, water. And you need to have a plan, an hydration plan during the day before pre-workout, pre 
rehydration, workout, and post-workout. Before training, you need to drink water two or three hours earlier, uh, half a liter, uh, 20, 30 minutes earlier, uh, a quarter of a liter of water. And during workout, you must drink water every 10 to 20 minutes. And you have to educate your gymnast to drink, to have this bottle of water in the gym and drink every 15 minutes, every 20 minutes, you have to drink because it's related with the capacity of uh, performance. And post-workout, it's recommended to uh, every pound of body weight that the gymnast lost, approximately uh, half kilogram, it has uh, to rehydrate it with uh, half a liter of water. So you have to educate this with your gymnast. And another specific idea that I think is very uh, interesting for coaches is to include some carbohydrates in this uh, hydration of the gymnast. Because if you include these carbohydrates, you could increase the capacity of the gymnast to work. So you have two possibilities. One is to combine water and fruit juice, 50-50, combine these two uh, fluids, or to use them uh, alternative. One hour, you, one hour you use water, the next hour you use fruit juice. You can use these two strategies, to combine 50-50 or to use then alternative. It produces to have more capacity to have energy. And if you have more energy, you have more capacity to work. So the quality of your training and the quantity of, the, of your training will grow. Now uh, we are going to speak about uh, sleep. Sleep is necessary for a complete recovery. Uh, I prefer other positions, but we are in gymnastics, so I, I uh, put this uh, slide. And why is uh, sleep uh, important? Because uh, the quality of this sleep, the quality of these critical uh, factors related with, uh, with sleep, have a direct relation with the capacity of human, with the capacity of human performance. A sleep length, a sleep quality, and the circadian sleep phases have a direct relation with the gymnast's ability to train, with the recovery process, and also with, with the risk of overtraining and with the risk of injury. So sleep is very important to have a complete recovery and is related with this aspect that can have a, a bad relation with performance. If you have a lack of uh, sleep, a gymnast could have change in mood, change in concentration, motivation, endurance, recover, and increase the risk of uh, overload and the risk of uh, injury. So we need the enough time to sleep. And um, how many time? This is a study from Canada, and you can see uh, the average of hours for sleeping at night. When the gymnast is 10 years old, the average is 10 hours. With 13 years old, the average is nine hours. And for 16 years old and older gymnasts, it's recommended eight hours for average. And how can you measure this uh, sleep length? There are different, uh, different methodologies to measure this uh, sleep length. In clinical research, they use uh, the polysonography. It's all in clinical research. In uh, sport research, uh, we use the actigraph in the active sleep. They are accelerometers that uh, measure the activity 
of the person. So you have this accelerometer uh, during the day and uh, the accelerometer uh, me uh, measured the activity during the day and uh, during night. And you can see how many hours of uh, sleep uh, have uh, inverted the person every day. Uh, this is for research, for sport uh, research. For coaches, we can use uh, activity bands. Activity bands uh, could give us uh, this information, could give uh, the number of hours, and uh, there are different uh, applications, and they could give you uh, the quality of this sleep. Um, it's better to have this uh, approximate uh, result than not having nothing. So you can use this information. And also, I recommend you a, a sleep log that uh, the gymnasts have to mark the number of uh, hours of sleep. Also, you can include a subjective uh, assessment of the quality of that uh, dream and you can include the record of the feeling uh, when we wake up in the morning. You can have this information, this variable is very good to know if the gymnasts have enough time to recover and the feeling, the feeling of the gymnast is very important to manage the training load. Also, we, if you are uh, working with high-level gymnasts, you can use these tracking journals and select different variables to have day-by-day uh, -day information. You can use different variables like the number of uh, hours of sleep, uh, having a scale for uh, having the information of the morning felt, if it is possible, the morning hair rate, and um, you can uh, use the number of hours of training and the information about the, the perception of the form of the training session. This is uh, very interesting to, to have the evolution of these variables. And also we are uh, working with young children. With young, young children, I recommend this type of tracking journals with emojis. With these emojis, you can have uh, an information for, uh, from children about the hours of sleep, the wake up felt, and other variables. And one special uh, and critical variable is the uh, sleep quality. Because you could have enough uh, hours to uh, sleep, but uh, this sleep is not uh, um, as quality as you need to uh, have this complete recovery. Because there are uh, typical factors that uh, affect this sleep quality, like sleep disorders. If you detect some sleep disorder, you need an especially in this area. There are another, another aspects that, that have this influence of the sleep uh, quality, like environmental disturbance and mad disorders. So you need to uh, improve the quality of this sleep. Uh, we try to give you this information, these tips, these advices to improve this quality of sleep. Our first recommendation is to keep a regular sleep schedule. So it's very interesting to set a regular bedtime and wake up at the same time every day. You have these regular times for going to bed and waking up in the morning. Another uh, advice is to create a, a relaxing bedtime routine. When you are going to bed, you are going to sleep. So turn off television, turn off your tablet, turn off your smartphone, uh, turn off Instagram, Facebook, it's not a good habit to go to bed and still be watching the picture on Instagram and Facebook. Please, don't do it. A smartphone and tablets out from the bedroom. Eat and drink correctly. Stay away from large fatty meals at night. 
you have to go you have to feel well to go to sleep properly um make your bedroom more sleep friendly you have to control the temperature of the bedroom and keep noise down also uh, you have to get anxiety and stress in check you need uh, some training to go to uh, bed and sleep better like deep breathing close your eyes and try to take deep slow breath you can train this habit and also there are different foods to help improve this uh, sleep quality it's very useful to uh, to eat uh, almonds banana kiwi drink milk at night with honey it uh, improves the quality of the sleep and also we have to uh, adapt we our activity with the circadian sleep phases we have different levels of activity during day and our activity our sport activity uh, must be related with these circadian sleep phases we have moments of big activity and moments for relax especially uh, with athletics with uh, a sport um, the hours that uh, you can have a better performance peaks are from 3 30 to 10 30 pm so normally we train during these hours and it's not a good idea to have a training session after these uh, hours because you modified this uh, natural green of the body And in the final part of this presentation, we are going to speak about uh, rest and different methodologies to increase the quality of this rest. We can use, so generally, we use uh, a stretching um, from rolling, but we can use a compression, we can use cold water immersion, cryotherapy, uh, and other uh, strategies and methodologies to improve this rest. Stretching is including our program, in our training program. The principal result of this uh, stretching is the relax, relax of the muscle. The other advantage of uh, stretching are not um, enough uh, studies, is not uh, so, so clear. So um, also, we use foam rolling. Foam rolling uh, can reduce the sensation of domes following exercise. Is one apparatus that we are now using a lot in gymnastic. Uh, we need more research about foam rolling, but the feeling of the gymnast is very good with this uh, with this uh, use. So. Our uh, advice, our uh, recommendation is to include a routine combining stretching and form rolling, but design your personal routine, okay? Having this uh, stretching and form rolling routine for your gymnast could be a good idea. Also, you have the opportunity of use compression garments these compression garments have uh, influence on recovery like a decrease in post exercise edema increase the removal of waste products and other uh, good influence for recovery there are now different research about the use of these compression garments you have to know that there are two kinds of uh, compression garments dynamic and static they have um, a good relation they improve the quality of the rest uh, the principal difference is the price obviously but uh, we need more research in this area we can see that uh, athletes feels uh, better using this compression garment 
So under the point of view of subjective feelings of the uh, gymnast, we can use it, but uh, we need more research related with this, uh, uh, with this compression garments. Also, uh, you can use the cold water immersion. It is uh, used in, in other sports, especially in athletics, in cycling, and it has a good relation for improve the quality of the rest. Uh, first, not for young children, okay? It's only for adults, not for children. The cold water immersion produces a vasoconstriction answering your body, have a, a, an analgesic effect, and also reducing inflammatory pathways. So it's a very uh, good option after training. Recommendation, the temperature must be between 10 and 20 degrees. It's not an ice, it's uh, an immersion in water between 10 and 20 uh, degrees. And uh, also, you have to think that with big uh, gymnasts, with big masses, you can use 10 to 15 degrees. With little gymnasts, use uh, 20 degrees. And how long? Or how long? Uh, the average is uh, 12 minutes, between 11, 15 minutes, but the average is 12 minutes. And uh, if you can uh, have all your body in this water immersion, it, it's better, okay? And standing is better than sitting. These are recommendations if you want to use this cold water immersion. And nowadays, the next step is uh, cryotherapy. These machines that uh, provide a situation of under 110 degrees. They try to have the gymnast or the athlete three minutes at this temperature. This is the whole body cryotherapy. There are few studies about the results of use this technology, uh, but uh, the studies that are related with this uh, cryotherapy uh, have compared the cold water immersion and, cure and cryotherapy don't uh, believe that there is a lot of difference using one or other methodology. Also, uh, another option is the contrast water therapy. It's uh, having two different pools, with one with uh, hot water and one with cold water, one minute and uh, seven rotations. It has very good uh, response because uh, it has a decrease in muscle strength loss, decrease in muscle soreness, decrease in accumulation in marks of muscle damage, but it depends on your possibilities. Another options are uh, electrostimulation that can have a massage, uh, massage effect with the body, whole body vibration, uh, there are uh, some frequencies that produce this uh, massage response in the body. Also, there are different methodologies. This is an example from the British Gymnastic that they use the pulse electromagnetic field therapy. So there are different possibilities uh, it depends of uh, what can you use. You can use one, two, or like the British gymnastic, this uh, electromagnetic field. So uh, what I want you to think is that uh, recovery is important. It's so important that uh, here you have the high performance center in Canberra as his uh, center in Australia, and they have an, a specific recovery center with different uh, strategies to have the better conditions for the recovery of the athletes. It's not uh, irreal. It's a real thing that uh, you have to include this recovery plan for your gymnast. 
Why? Because you want the best performance of your engine. So you have to manage all these pieces. You need to have the better possibilities for develop the, fas the physical preparation, the technical preparation, and also these little pieces must be worked as best as possible. Our recommendation is we have bring you possibilities. All these presentations are possibilities for you as coach. Now you have to design your personal recovery program. Is, is related with your possibilities, with your club, with your, um, with your money also. So one, uh, it could be an advantage to have your personal recovery program. Why? Because think, small changes can make a big difference. We are uh, looking for the highest performance levels. There is a, a different and small difference between a, a good performance and best performance. And also think the details make the difference in the end. So have a look at these details. So this is the end of my presentation. And now uh, it's time for discussion. Marco. Thank you, Ignacio. Thank you very much. I'm sure your presentation will be extremely useful for coaches and gymnastics instructors around the world. So we still have some time for a few questions, if you don't mind. Oh, perfect. Oh, good. What are the main mistakes in food intakes that should be avoided? Is there any behavior that is usually observed in gymnastics. Yes, it's a very, very interesting uh, question because I think the, the, the most uh, normal problem is that we don't have a long-term plan for nutrition. We use nutrition when we have uh, very important champions, we have Olympics and we think about, oh, I have to, I need a plan for nutrition. No, nutrition has long-term answer. It's a question of habits. It's not an immediately answer. You change your nutrition and you have immediately an increase of performance. No, it don't work like this. You need a long-term plan in nutrition. And also in gymnastics, the role of proteins of animal proteins it's your option but uh, i recommend to to think about the advantage of plant and proteins uh, from animal you have to choose but uh, nowadays plant proteins have a lot of advantage uh, another um, problem with gymnasts is that we spend a lot of hours training and we have to educate our gymnasts to have the adequate nutrition and hydration during training. Because uh, we can lose a lot of capacity of doing work without this uh, specific hydration with this uh, carbohydrates intake during training. And also, uh, I don't have time and I don't want to, I don't think it's related with this uh, topic. We have problems with food disorders in other disciplines. Uh, my uh, opinion is that we need help in these cases. Uh, coaches must have uh, reference, uh, specialist professionals in this area. And uh, the best is to have um, a good. Um, uh, detection. The detection of this problem, the early detection of this problem is basic. So thank you very much. It's really interesting how much we can learn every day. So one last question, please. Do you think it is possible to sleep and wake up feeling tired? What to do in this case? Yes. Perfectly, yes. And this is a real problem. And I think in, uh, in 
there is a, a lot of cases in which our gymnasts have e enough time to, to, to sleep, but when he or she wake up in the morning, he feel tired. Be why? Because the quality of this, uh, of this sleep is, is not uh, enough. And why it could be uh, enough this quality? Because the quality of a sleep is related with uh, anxiety, is related with uh, the pressure that the gymnasts have for the competition. So um, we have to educate the gymnasts to control the anxiety, to control the stress, to control their mind in front of a big competition. So uh, we need to know that this is real. This is a real problem that gymnasts have. A lot of time they don't say anything to the coach because they think, oh, it's normal. I am nervous and I couldn't sleep well. No, there is uh, a strategies, there are uh, uh, tips to improve the quality of the sleep. But we have to ask the gymnasts, we have to control this quality of, of a sleep if we want to have a better choice for performance. So thank you. Ignacio, we all know how difficult it is to present uh, these uh, such difficult subjects in a second language. So I would like to really thank you very much for your presentation and I hope to see you in another opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marco. And excuse me, I make mistakes, but it's normal. Thank you. Oh, the what wonderful. We are really, really, uh, we need to say thank you again and again for you. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. So my dear friends, as we already mentioned, we are going to have three other events in the following weeks include one more webinar live. Everyone is invited to join us in these events. It is important to remember that after all these events, uh, the FIG will make them available on the FIG Education channel at YouTube. Please keep following us in the next events. Thank you very much for your attention. I see you there. Bye-bye.